Welcome to an out of the box preview video. This week I have been taking a look at the Cursed Hunter. This is a solo player RPG in which you are a cursed hunter. So you are set in a fantasy world um, and you are roaming around a fantasy environment taking contracts from a city guild in order to hunt down monsters or bandits and go on exploration, collect things um, and trying to remove your curses from your character. So the game is print and play. So I have bound the rule book in spiral books and there's an exploration journal. As you travel around the environment, um, you roll dice that determines where you visit, um, what happens, um, challenges that you have to face. There is a lot of content in this. I've been playing it for a couple of hours this week, on and off. Um, I'm probably going to do another video once I'm a bit further through it. But I thought, well, while I'm at the start, I'll do one now, just to give people a, an idea. Um, I should say that this is coming to Kickstarter, and these are preview files. So um, anything that you see is potentially will change um, during the Kickstarter. So um, what do you get? So I've laminated little board game on this I've laminated it. it is set around a city so you start in a city that has a set of guilds um, that allow you to take contracts when you get those contracts they will indicate um, an area of the um, countryside and so there's a map with areas that you can go and explore and um, mark them up on the map. So I've laminated these. I guess in retrospect, it probably, I kind of laminated them like it was a board game, um, but it's, it's an RPG. It, it's a role playing game. So it probably would have been better just to print them out on paper and use a pencil. You get a bit more finer detail that you can write notes on and things. Um, when you start the game, you build a character. Um, that's really easy. Um, you roll a dice for an origin. Um, my, I think there's six different origins. I got the temple. Then you get to pick a particular class. I matched it with initiate. So I'm kind of going for a, a, a magi type, magic user type character. Um, you have some underlying, um, not handicap, but more of a um, kind of a backstory. I've got a stigma on mine, so I get, I get to lose um, certain, certain values when I do character design. Um, the character itself is driven with two main properties. So you've got vitality, uh, maximum of six, you start off with, and then aura. It's a bit like mana. So it's, you know, it's kind of you can use a few magic. The, the, the magic system, the skill system, is, is based around four sets of forces. So umbra, primal, um, art, and arcane. As you build your character, Depending on your choices, you can change the base values of your forces. Those forces are also represented across the different zones that you travel in the country. And so that comes in later when you can try and improve your um, roles. These are used for um, challenges and kind of skill roles. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, your character has starts with a curse. If you get four curses, that is game over. Um, as you move around, you get multiple marks against you. If you do bad things or bad things happen to you, corruption, ravage, inhumanity, the void. If you get multiple of those, you get more curses. And so the game is to try and minimize the number of marks you get, um, reduce your curses and try and survive. You've got a section here for weapons. So you've got a primary weapon, um, you've got a bag where you can have food or things you collect. A lot of the game, um, particularly the locations that you visit, are based on keywords. And so I'll go through that in a minute. But as you collect keywords, you write them down and that then unlocks more things that you can access. The magic -y type system is based on disciplines and those are tied to the forces in the environment. And so there's a opportunity to do study that allows you to learn skills, which allows you to upgrade your character, which then allows you to get better combat, better skill roles, 
um, and they're, they're tied into these things called disciplines. You have sets of masteries. As you get more masteries, you can get more disciplines. Basically, it's like, um, it's not like a skill, it's kind of like a spell book. Um, you, you get new things that can happen. Um, I've kind of written mine at the back so that I forget them. So I've got intuition, means off combat, I get a plus one if I spend arcane or an uncane or an umbra test. Cost me one aura. So that's really handy. You get some that you get given when you build your character. Um, and then in combat, they have this, there's a, a sets of, you can get advantages, there's resistances, weaknesses, and parries. So there's, the combat, the combat's simple, I'll talk about that in a minute, um, but it's it's got a nice level of complexity. In terms of how long the game takes, um, it's 24 turns. And so it is based on a moon cycle. You're cursed. Um, as the moon goes through it, you have sets of nights where you are going through each night. You are attempting to do more exploration, fulfill more contracts, earn more resources, um, and you then cross off a night. A, a, a full night cycle or day cycle. I'm going to look it up because it's always good to get it correct. Um, is. Oh, I've lost that just the purple one actually. There we go. So you spend a night, which gives you three actions. Um, I get to use tokens so I can work out how many actions I've got left. You get three actions. Then at the end of a night, if you've moved to a new cycle of the moon, you roll for a moon hunt. I'll talk about hunts in a minute. Then you camp. So if you're out and about, you camp or you're in the city, you can go rent a room um, and rest up. Um, and then you cross off another day, another night, and then you go to the next night. You spend actions by moving around the map. Um, there's little moon symbols. Each time you cross a moon symbol, it costs you an action point. Every time you hit a um, unexplored area, that requires you to spend an action point to engage with that area. So let's have a look at the map. So the map up here is in two parts. Um, I'm actually here, so I've got a meeple. Um, and it's quite a neat mechanism for keeping track of what happens on the map. So as you move from the city um, and you hit a, an unexplored, you roll a dice. That then determines what happens at that area. There were some challenges. In this case, there were some raiders that then killed me. Um, first challenge failed miserably. I went, I got back, sent back to Lies, the city. Um, the next time I went the other way. This time, you write down um, the the number. You have a, um, a particular title, and when you finished it, complete it, you just cross it out. So I finished that one. I just finished this one, which was an obstacle. Moving between areas that before you hit a moon cycle doesn't cost you anything, so you can wander around. There is a so when you where's the um, exploration? So we've got the exploration journal, which is done by region. So you've got the chains, the hearths, the mirror, and the arches on oh, pavement areas. So when you get a move into one of these areas, you roll a dice. If it's under seven, you actually roll three dice. I've nicked my um, Witcher dice from Richard Old World. Um, if it's under seven, nothing happens. Um, it's a waste of an action. You get to re you reroll again if you've got another action point. If it's over seven and under 16, you dial it up. Um, it will tell you if it's in a particular moon cycle, you look at the current moon and if it is something else will happen so if that's in that moon cycle you have to do the alchemist event um, otherwise you run through it it will have i'll zoom that up a little bit you can see that it's got a challenge which is based on the forces of this particular um, zone so umbra and primal six and seven you have to beat if you succeed you pick up some keywords um which you then go on here the keywords are important because every new moon, you roll for a moon hunt. And I have stuck that in here as well. I've kind of joined all these together to make it easy for me. I 
should probably, here we go, I should probably put some, I'm going through it, as I go through it, I am sticking little labels so I can find stuff. So the moon hunts are like, when, when you go from uh, location to location, you you explore and, and random events pop. If you're in lies um, or with the moon hunt, these are specific contracts that you can do. These are the good things. And so um, you can fix, you can get better rewards and it's a way of progressing the game. That being said, um, each one is, again, if we look down here, it is tied to a particular region, the archers. Um, and this is a beastie one. Um, there's a monstrous ball living on the edge of the wild ponds. Um, you need keywords, beast and track, before you can actually engage with this one. And so the game goes through a cycle of during the night you run actions to, to explore. If you're successful in your exploration, you get keywords. If you get the keywords that match a particular hunt. So what I do is when I get a hunt, I write them down the side. So this has got four keywords. And as I find the keywords, I'm crossing them off. When I've got those, I could travel there, attempt the hunt. And again, that's going to progress the story even further. There is a lot of content in this game. Um, and because the event, the explorations are randomly generated, there's a lot of replayability um, because there's six classes and six origins. You can mix and match to whatever you kind of like. I'm going with a magic user, hopefully, um, kind of a magey type character. The other big part of this game is challenges. So it uses a three dice system. Um, you need two dice of one color. So they suggest white and black. I'm using yellow and red because that's what my Witcher dice have come in. And so you attempt a challenge, say you go to, oh, what's that one? Pines. The Pines is 16. You'd look that up in the chains, chains area. When I arrive there, um, 16, it's an obstacle. It has an arcane 6 or primal 7. So I have got arcane 4, um, primal 1. So I guess I'm going to be doing it with arcane. But... I also have mastery of combat, so I could spend one arcane, one aura, to get plus one. So that would put me on to five. I've only got to hit six. So you roll your three dice, and you're looking for successes. And a success is a five or a six. So I absolutely nailed it, which is great. So I'll pass that test. Say I got that. Say I got a six, a one, and a, th a two, and I needed, um, say I needed seven, I was one short, you can say, well, I failed this one, but I'm going to spend another action point and try it again. And you get to keep your successful one. So you re -roll, you'd re-roll them again. Cool. And I'd just pick up another success, and then I would pass. So as long as you've got action points, you keep your successes in the kind of chain. Combat goes exactly the same. Um, when you go into combat, you roll your dice. If you get a, I think it's, yeah, if you get a, a, a one or a two with your light dice, um, you lose a life point, that, that, uh, uh, a vitality. Successes, you chain up your successes to um, chip away at the health points of whoever you're fighting, and you get to keep those as well. So you just keep on rolling your dice losing vitality, keeping successes until you reach a threshold. So the game is very much dice based on thresholds, whether it's exploration or combat. Um, if you get a one or a two on your yellow dice, you lose a vitality, so that's you taking wounds. If you get a two on your red dice, um, then the enemy's special move kicks off and that does something bad as well. There are ways of manipulating the dice based on the skills that you've picked up, the masteries, the weapons that you've picked up, and the resources that you've got. Like I say, I've just kind of started, so I'm, I kind of died first of all, but then I've gone cruising along here, and I've finished the obstacle, which was really good. I've picked up a whole lot of keywords, and I've picked up some um, attributes. I'm wandering, I've got a beggar's quest, I've got a skull. So... 
there's a lot going on. So at the end of the day, so I've got to the end of the day of, I'm on my third day, so I thought, well, let's see what's gonna happen as we carry on. So at the end of my day, I have to, it's my purple one, I've got that tied up. Right, end of the day, I tick off a new box. It's a new moon, so we have to ro we have to roll for a new moon quest. So let's dig that out. So what's this one? There are lots of stuff to go for. So my moon hunt, and I roll. I do believe I roll all three? No, it can't be all three because it's only one, two, twenty. Let's check that out. It's always good to do it properly when you're doing it on a video. And this is a role-playing game, so there are a lot of rules. This isn't a, let's just put it down and play for 10 minutes and have fun with the game. Um, it's, 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 an RP, it's an RPG. Oh, you really roll three dice. Okay, so we've got moon effects. Um, there's a moon effect on a, on a full, or empty moon and a full moon. That's not going to happen, so I don't have to worry about that. And I roll a five. So then we go and look up. Five. Shamira. Okay. And so each one of these has a location. Hearts. Hearts. That's going to happen over here. The Moon Knights are these ones that look like shields. Um, and I can choose whether I want to pick it or not. And I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that down. Shamira. And I'm going to tag that it is on number five so I can look it up um, it requires an abomination knowledge and knowledge and fire so I don't have any of those as my keywords so there's no way I can start that so that's kind of reserved so back to the night we are okay I am camping out in the middle of the day um, I have to chop off a food, so I'm down to two food, if you run out of food you start losing vitality, um, and then we can do our camp action. So, camp action, I can choose one of rest, gather, or study. So if I rest, which is what I'm going to do, I get an extra vitality, which I'm back up to five, I get one aura so i'm back up to one which isn't great i used a lot of vital a lot of aura in my last quest if you do gathering you can go gather for food um, if you study you then roll the dice if you or you roll the white dice um, and you add up what forces you've got you work out which zone you're in so if i was doing it in chain you get a plus one on your arcane then you can get one or more masteries. If you get up to three masteries, means you can get a new discipline, which gets you a new um, new special feature. So again, it's that character building, um, which this is really rich in. I haven't really touched on the curses and the other bits and pieces. So if you like, so then that would be the end of the night. I would get my three action points left back, and then I'm good to go. I am then good to think, well, what do I want to do next? It's an open world. Um, I don't have enough, I don't have enough keywords yet to do any of the big hunts. I've got three hunts out here. This one's looking good. I, I'll probably go cruising up here and try, try my luck there and see what's going on. At any point, because that's going to cost me no actions because I'm traveling within the same area. Any point you can go back to Lies, which is the main town. You can change trophies for banners and get more money, uh, get more food. Um, there's some adventure areas in there that you can try out as well. There is literally hours of adventuring in here, solo adventuring. And because of the random system, um, that's going to make replayability. Great, I'm gonna try it with maybe a fightery type next time. Um, the, the dice system 
is good. I like it in terms of you get to try. If it doesn't work, you can spend another um, action point to keep your successes and keep on building till you hit a threshold. And I think that that's going to change the way that you approach things, going going, and exploring early so you can do more, more choices is going to make it a lot more successful. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how I can improve my character so that I can then um, do some of the bigger challenges. I'm going to be carrying on with this over the next week or so. Um, and I'll probably do another video later on once I'm a little bit further. Maybe when I go to my first moon hunt. Um, and, you know, you've only got 24 turns. Anyway, that is a roundabout overview of the solo RPG that is The Cursed Hunter. Um, I think lots of content. Interesting um, set off, set up. Um, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe and like.